today we turn today you hear me better now today we turn to the gospel of Luke chapter 19 verses 1 through 10 He entered Jericho and was passing through and there was a man named Zacchaeus he was a chief tax collector and rich, and he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not on account of the crowd, because he was small of stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded any one of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he who is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. This is the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. I love this story. If you can't tell, I would memorize the song and keep it near and dear to my heart. I think this story is is all of us, isn't it? We might not be small in stature. We might not necessarily be a wee little man or woman. But sometimes we want to run and climb and and, and see better. I mean, hello, we pick our spots in the pews based on if somebody is in front of us or not, in whom we can kind of look through or around. Don't deny it. And yet, the one who wanted to see is a known sinner. Well, we don't know what his sins might be, except for that he was a tax collector, and if we know anything about ancient culture, tax collectors were the lowest of the low. They like to cheat people. They like to say, well, I know you owe me, and you owe me now, and because you haven't paid the full amount, you're going to owe me interest, and I'm going to come back in two weeks to get that. And if you don't pay that at that moment in time, I'll come back again and you'll just keep on owing me. There's a reason every tax collector in scripture is notated as rich. Because you see how they got paid was by taking a portion of what they collected. Wouldn't that be nice? So Zacchaeus was a sinner. But he still wanted to see Jesus. You see, too often I think that we as people of faith and as the prescribed Christian umbrella, perhaps it's hard for sinners to want to even see Jesus because when they look around, who do they see? People who block them from Christ's view. You see, in our own eagerness to see Christ, perhaps we are not making the path easier for those who sin to find their way to Jesus. Have we ever thought about that? That we inhibit others from seeing Christ? And so the only way that they can is to climb up to somewhere more visible, to get a better view. It's a little humbling in some ways to think about the fact that 
we in the best, very best of our intentions in seeing Christ might actually be blocking Christ. I mean, we know what a parade route looks like. Just recently, I went to Gatlinburg for their 4th of July parade. It's cool. If you've never been to Gatlinburg for their 4th of July midnight parade, it starts at midnight. It is exhausting. Do not take young children ever again. <laughs> but it's so neat. I mean, the whole town is blocked off. It's all down that main strip. You can set your seat out early in the day to, to find your spot. It's fascinating, though, because some people are so particular about their spot that even if you have a young child or something like that, and all the kid wants is the candy that the people are throwing down, you can't get through. We've been in parades like that, right? Those stubborn souls who are like, I am here, I have had my seat here, do not move me. You can go around me. And when you're a kid, that stinks. Now the Achaeus is not a child. He's obviously an adult. But if he is small of stature, what difference is he from any of the children that we know? It doesn't say what a small stature is. But he's not able to see Christ on the normal means, so he has to climb this tree. I don't know why it's significant that it's a sycamore tree. It does make a really cool line in the song, though. What is most significant, though, is that Jesus comes to the place where he is. And instead of acknowledging the rows of people who are obviously faithful because they got the front row seat, he looks up and he calls out this sinner. Now, I don't know about you all, but whenever I was in class and I didn't know the answer and I hadn't done my homework, I really always looked down and hoped that my teacher or professor did not look at me so I did not have to answer that question that I knew I did not know the answer to. We've all been there. Although some of us who are teachers enjoy being the one who calls out that one individual. <coughs> It is somewhat fun. And we've got to have the small pleasures in life. But I mean, Zacchaeus is a sinner. Why would he want to put himself up in a visible spot so that Jesus, who the man without sin, would see him? I don't know if he thought that far ahead. I think he just wanted to get a good seat. As a rich man, he would have been afforded many of the joys of life, many of the easy things in life, and given much prominence. But yet, this is a parade-type deal. This is someone coming through in a crowd who is not necessarily following the normalness of life. I mean, we know that there are particular things that we each got to do in particular orders of the way things are. Isn't that the phrase that we all grew up hearing? Well, this is just the way things are. Live with it. Deal with it. Who grew up hating that phrase? So the Lord looks up at Zacchaeus and says, You silly, silly man, get down. Don't you know I'm coming to your house? Now, to go to someone's house in this day and age was a little bit more than just coming over for dinner. Whenever you went to a person's house, you were afforded every courtesy that they could possibly offer you. Such as having a servant to wash your feet, wash the trials of your journey from 
your feet. Give you a space to lay your head and rest. And if this is a person of prominence, you are expected to feed not just them, but the entirety of their entourage. So when Christ is going to Zacchaeus' house, it's not just, oh, hey, I'm your friend, I'm coming over. It is, hey, me and my 12 buddies, plus all of their friends, are coming over. And the crowd sees this. That group of faithful people sees this. They see the Lord calling on Zacchaeus to, to give Zacchaeus the honor of hosting Jesus Christ in his home. And the crowd goes, well, wait one minute. Why would you pick him to represent our town, our space, our everything? Why would you pick him? I mean, he's not the most faithful. He's not the most like you. He's not the most giving or generous or loving. He's a sinner. I don't know about you, but I sometimes feel that way. You feel the way in which you've lived your entire life. You strive to be a good person, to be a good Christian, to walk the walk of Christ in all things, to read your Bible, to pray more, to do a meal for another, to collect goods, to, to serve other people, and then yet it seems like someone just comes up out of the woodwork and gets all the glory. They put in one day's effort and they get it all. And what do you get? I think that sometimes we give a lot of accolade to those who are new Christians. If you're not understanding my frame of reference, it's those who have come to faith, come to know Jesus, who have made their confessions of faith later in life because they never knew Jesus or were the term unchurched. They didn't grow up in the church. But then all of a the sudden they have this conversion moment. And that conversion moment has changed their life into such an extreme way that suddenly they are on fire for Christ. And you go, what in the heck happened? I've been doing this the whole time. It's not the best feeling in the world because then you realize that maybe you've been doing it the whole time. But maybe because you've been doing it your whole life, you've lost some of the same passion for living a life of faith. It is hard to live a joyful and consistent and Christ-like life. It is wearying, particularly when you are not given any sort of praise for it, because we as people... Let's admit it and be honest. We like to have it acknowledged that we've done good. We want at the end of our days to have Christ tell us when we, when we meet Jesus. We want it said, well done, good and faithful servant. And it bites a little. It stings a little when it seems as if the last is now first. And we were first in line. And yet they receive the same. That's another one of these stories. You didn't get that. They're riddled through scripture where someone who is a sinner suddenly transforms their life around and is used as a 
mark and a measure for which the rest of us get to stand up to. I mean, it sounds all good and wonderful for Zacchaeus to say, Behold, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. Well, he's a really rich man. Half of his goods still leaves him a lot. I mean, when you have nothing, giving half of your goods is, is a lot. And yet we elevate stories such as these. We elevate them in our minds and don't acknowledge that our own journeys of faith are just as significant and as important as these moments of true transformation.
as the people of God. Who do we choose to be? Do we choose to be the blocker or do we choose to be the friend? Do we choose to look outside of our regular way and see those who are seeking and call them down and invite them in? If for no other reason, Jesus did it. 